alkanes, alkyl halides, and how to name them. Generally, an alkane will have the chemical formula Cn H2n plus 2. This is because, strictly speaking, alkanes do not contain any multiple bonds. All of the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds. And because each carbon wants to make four bonds, there will be twice as many hydrogens plus two. Say n equals four. Then we have four carbons. Each carbon is bonded four times. So internal carbons will be CH2 groups, and external carbons will have the same two H's that internal carbons do, plus one to be the terminal atom. So, two times N plus two equals 10. There should be 10 hydrogens here, and in fact there are. So you can think of this as CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Our terminal carbons are CH3s, and our internal carbons are CH2s. Of course, a bond line structure is the easiest way to draw this. One, two, three, four carbons. Let's make a distinction between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Alkenes contain at least one double bond. And alkynes contain at least one triple bond. Bear in mind that each pi bond decreases the number of hydrogens by two. You can see it here. In a carbon-carbon triple bond, that's one sigma bond and two pi bonds. And then there can only be two hydrogens in this molecule. Whereas over here, we only have one pi bond as opposed to two. And we can have up to four hydrogens, or we could have four other carbons. Cycloalkanes are rings. Here's a four-membered ring. Don't forget the implied hydrogens here. There's two at each corner. So this one has the chemical formula, C4H8. A ring decreases the number of hydrogens by two as well. So here is one four carbon alkane. That's the straight chain butane. We could also take and make this a branched compound. In other words, like this. So these compounds are constitutional isomers, meaning they have the same chemical formula but different connectivity. When you name them, they each have a different name. The straight compound is named butane. The branched compound is 2-methylpropane. Two methyl propane because its longest carbon carbon chain has three carbons in it, and we've got this methyl group on carbon two. Note the punctuation. Anytime you change from numbers to letters, there'll be a dash. All right, let's talk about naming these things systematically. When you're naming an alkane, the first thing you do is Decide what is the parent chain. 
and the parent chain is going to be the longest carbon-carbon chain in the molecule. You name the parent chain according to the number of carbons in it. You're responsible for numbers 1 through 10. So 1 is methane, 2 is ethane, 3 is propane, 4 is butane, 5 is pentane, 6 is hexane, 7 is heptane, 8 octane, 9 is nonane, and 10 is decane. Step two is to look for substituents. These will be uh, smaller carbon-carbon chains bonded to the parent chain. And the substituents, if they're straight, are named for the number of carbons they contain. And we use the same roots, meth, eth, prop, bute, but instead of ain, we end in il. So if our substituent has one carbon, a CH3 group, then it's a methyl. Two, it's a CH2, CH3 group, that's an ethyl. Three is propyl. Four is butyl. Five is pentyl. Six is hexyl. Seven is heptyl. Eight is octyl. Nine is nonyl. Ten is decyl. Sometimes we have what we call branched or complex substituents. For instance, if you had your parent chain R and it was bonded to a three carbon chain, but bonded to the second carbon of it, we call that one isopropyl. That's its common name. To make a systematic name for a complex substituent, you number the carbon that's bonded to the parent chain as number one, and then you find the longest carbon-carbon chain here. So isopropyl is actually an ethyl group with a methyl on carbon one. So the systematic name for it is, in parentheses, one methyl ethyl. And then down here, I've just shown the um, condensed for structure for that one, for isopropyl. Use isopropyl instead of 1-methyl-ethyl. Almost everyone does. What if you have a complex substituent with four carbons instead of three? Like this. Again, we would designate this as carbon number one and carbon number two, but now we have two methyl groups. So the systematic name would be one, two, dimethyl ethyl. Again, hardly anyone uses that because there's also a common name for it, t-butyl. And here's a condensed structure for t-butyl. Is that the only four carbon complex substituent? No. There's also this one. Actually, let's draw it like that. We call this sec butyl for secondary butyl. And if we name it systematically, this is carbon one, two, and three with a methyl group on carbon one. 
So the complex name is, or the systematic name is, 1-methylpropyl. Again, most people use the common name, secbutyl. If we move the methyl group from carbon 1 of the substituent to carbon 2 of the substituent, then the systematic name would be 2-methylpropyl. And the common name is isobutyl. Sometimes you have a complex substituent that is sufficiently uncommon that there is no common name. In that case, rely on the systematic name. Again, carbon number one is the one bonded to the parent chain. And then number like so. And the systematic name becomes, let's see, we've got an ethyl group on carbon number one and a methyl group on carbon number two. So the systematic name of this complex substituent is 1-ethyl-2-methylpropyl. Enough about complex substituents. So say we wanted to name this. The first thing we do is we identify the parent chain. So we start counting carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, nine. So in this case, the parent chain is nonane because it's got nine carbons. The next thing we want to do is decide which direction to number it in because we want to get the lowest possible numbers for the substituents. Let's look at the substituents. So as far as substituents go, we have an isopropyl here and we have a methyl group and another methyl group. So when we name this, we're going to first name the substituents in alphabetical order, and each one is preceded by the number of the carbon it's on, or, I'm sorry, and then we're going to put the um, name of the parent chain. Now, we always want to number this so as to have the substituents get the lowest possible numbers. The numbers are called locants. So if we number right to left in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's better. Right? If we numbered left to right, our locants, left to right, our locants would be 6, 8, and 8 which is not nearly as good as numbering right to left. Our right to left locants are 2, 2, 4. Right? And it's the, when you're trying to decide, it's always the first locant lowest wins. So 2 is lower than 6. If the first locant is a tie, then you go to the second locant. If the second locant is a tie, you go to the third, and so on and so forth. So now as we're assembling the name, first we put the names and the locants of the substituents. So we've got 4-isopropyl, and we've got 2-methyl, and we've got 2-methyl. Now we're going to put isopropyl first because I comes before M. Right, so we're assembling these in alphabetical order. By the way, the ISO is the only time you use the prefix in a complex substituent name. Secondly, 
every single substituent gets a locant. So, since there's two methyl groups on carbon 2, it's going to be 2,2-dimethyl. Di, because there's two methyl groups, 2,2, two, two because they're both on carbon 2. And so, the full name comes out to 4-isopropyl, 2,2-dimethyl, two, two, nonane. Okay, no spaces in the name anywhere, dashes to separate numbers from letters, commas to separate numbers from other numbers, a prefix to indicate number of, right? The di, because there are two methyls, and each group gets a locant, even if it's two of the same group. Say your parent chain is bonded to a halogen, like RCL. The CL group is called a chloro. If it were a BR, it would be a bromo. I, sorry, R to I, that's an iodo substituent. And R to F is a fluoro substituent. As an exercise, try naming this compound. Remember, first decide on the parent, then decide on the locants, then the substituents, and then assemble it alphabetically. Pause and work the question. Once you have an answer, resume your video and check it against mine. Clearly, I want to start on the right-hand side of this molecule in numbering it. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that gives me my longest carbon-carbon chain. The parent is octane. As far as the substituents go, I've got methyl groups on carbons 2 and 3, and a fluoro on carbon 4. As far as the alphabet goes, F comes before M. So when I name it, it's going to be 4 fluoro. 2, 3, dimethyl octane. Is that what you got? Be honest. Did you start numbering it like this? and go 2 isopropyl, I'm sorry, again it would be 4 fluoro, dash 2 isopropyl heptane. Well, if you said that, someone would be able to draw the structure correctly. But according to the conventions, you want to have the longest parent chain.